Week one of the college football season is officially upon us, and with it, we need to talk about my top five games of week one, plus an honorable mention. Before we do, as always, y'all know the drill. I want to hear from you. Hop down to the comments, let me know which game you're most excited about, and then let me know what you're most excited about with college football coming back in general. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, hit that bell notification. I do constant college football content, you don't want to miss any of it, and I would love to have you along for the journey. And if you did enjoy this content, be sure to like and comment down below. Those interactions are massive to content creators such as myself. But with all that being said, let's jump straight into this, and I want to start with my honorable mention, and that is UCLA versus LSU. UCLA in Week 0 came out very impressive, showing different things on defense as far as the blitz was concerned, but ultimately that rushing attack was what really stood out. They were able to down Hawaii in an impressive fashion, but let's not make any mistake about it. Hawaii and LSU are two totally different beasts. Now, ultimately, I think this is an interesting game because UCLA is in a position where they come out with a really, really strong rushing attack. But Robinson struggled from the passing perspective. And if you're wanting to come out and really make a mark against a team like LSU, if you are UCLA, you cannot be singular in your attack. You cannot rely just on a rushing attack. LSU's far too talented for that. The quarterback in the passing game have got to come along. And if not, it's going to be a long day for UCLA. And that's something I'm ultimately worried about from UCLA's perspective, because if their passing attack would have been just as solid as their rushing attack, this probably would have cracked the top five games instead of being an honorable mention but nonetheless it's an honorable mention because that rushing attack did look formidable it truly did with a multiple of different running backs they were putting them in a position of success and LSU is coming off of a 2019 that had a historic team a 2020 where they were down and so we know LSU is going to be looking to make a statement in this game so that's why it's my honorable mention ultimately I do expect LSU to win because they're very talented they're a team that I think is going to rebound in 2021 and it's a really good statement game to have especially when UCLA came out as strong as they did Ultimately, I think LSU takes that. Number five on the list is Indiana versus Iowa. Both teams finishing second in their respective divisions within the Big Ten. And the Big Ten is really providing us with some heavy hitting games on Saturday because my next one is also a Big Ten matchup. But I want to focus on this one for right now. For Indiana, you had one of the most exciting teams in 2020, and that looks to continue this year, chasing Ohio State within your division, but they're not the only team because Penn State, who had a down year last year, is looking to rebound, and you can make a massive statement game against a really quality opponent in Iowa. Likewise for Iowa, Iowa's coming out in this game against one of the hottest teams in 2020, and a quarterback that I think the eyes of the college football world will be very interested in seeing how he progresses this season in Penix. But if you are Iowa, you have a good position to be in. You finished the year very strong last year, and you're looking to continue that into this year. Because your side of the division isn't very easy this year. Northwestern doesn't want to give up that hold. Wisconsin looks to get back into that place, and all the while you're sitting there, and what a better statement to make than downing Indiana in week one. But that moves me forward to the next game within the Big Ten. Penn State versus Wisconsin. And like the other game, we're looking at number three versus number three in last year's ranking for their respective divisions within the Big Ten. Penn State's in a position where they had a really down year last year. James Franklin is a very good coach, and he's looking to get that program back on track for where they should be. And a win against Wisconsin would be huge. Wisconsin, on the other hand, is in a very similar position, though they didn't have as bad of a season as Penn State, but they're ultimately looking to work their way back up to where they would like to be within their division of the Big Ten, and coming out week one and downing Penn State would be massive for the Badgers. So this is a game I'm very interested in seeing as well. I ping-ponged a while between my number three and number four. The Penn State-Wisconsin almost came in at number three, but ultimately, Louisiana versus Texas takes that number three spot, and I'm going to tell you why. Louisiana is a team that came out and downed Iowa State last year. They're really well coached in Billy Napier, and they return a lot of talent. On the flip side, the Longhorns are looking to start the Sark era off in strong fashion, and they can do that with a win against Louisiana because it's a quality opponent in a quality game. Texas is in a position where they're starting a new quarterback, new 
coach. And with all of this new, you would really like to capitalize on beating a quality opponent. Now for Texas, I think a lot of this comes down to their defense. Can you keep Louisiana to where they're struggling running the ball? Because as explosive as Louisiana's offense was last year, a lot of it was predicated off the run. If Texas can take that away, I think Louisiana will have a hard time. But likewise, if you're looking at what Texas will look to do on offense, I think it's very simple. I think Sark will look to get Hudson Card involved with some very easy throws early on, RPO action, but ultimately relying on the talented running backs he has to take them to the distance because Texas does have a very talented running back room. In this game, ultimately, I think Texas takes it, but it will be a close game and one that I really can't wait to watch. My number two game almost was the number one game, and it's very hard for me not to put it as the number one game, and that is the Alabama Crimson Tide versus the Miami Hurricanes. Now, ultimately, I think this game comes down to discipline. I say discipline because of this right here. Miami's strength this year will look to be their offense in returning De'Eric King, and Alabama's strength, at least in the early portion of the season, will look to be that defense, which is ferocious. So the discipline on Alabama's side, can you stay home? Can the linebackers and everybody stay disciplined to make sure De'Eric King doesn't hurt you with his athleticism? And when you look at the roster they have, I absolutely think they have the talent to do so. On the flip side for Miami, if you're going to try and beat Alabama, you can't play yourself as well. And Miami had a terrible tendency of getting themselves in a good position and killing it with penalties last year. That is a losing recipe through and through, especially against a team like Alabama. So can you play disciplined? Alabama is going to be looking to replace their offense, which was vaunted last year, with a really talented group this year, albeit inexperienced. So I think a lot of people, as excited as we are to see how the Alabama offense comes together there's so much excitement about this defense which could be vaunted and which I think has one of the better front sevens in all of college football this is going to be a really entertaining game to watch one that I've been looking forward to forever and one that cannot come quick enough but finally, for the number one game of the week, and for me, I don't think it's going to be a surprise. I've hinted at it for quite some time here on the channel, Georgia Clemson. Clemson's replacing Trevor Lawrence with DJU, the heir of the throne, and what a guy to replace a passer such as Trevor Lawrence. DJU came in last year, and any time he was asked to play successful football, he did it. Any of the losses they experienced last year was not a result of DJU. I think he is a unbelievably capable quarterback. I think he's going to be a top 10 quarterback unquestionably when college football is finished next year. I think this kid is phenomenally talented and Clemson has a lot of talent outside of him. The question for me is, for Clemson, how are you going to be able to protect DJU? Because I would imagine Georgia is going to do everything they can to make him uncomfortable and make him uncomfortable early because he doesn't have the experience. But if we flip the script and look at this from Georgia's perspective, Georgia also has a quarterback that is very highly regarded in JT Daniels, the former Matter Day quarterback, which California quarterbacks are littering college football right now. Georgia has a lot to be excited about this year, but recently the injury bug has shown its ugly head. And this is going to be something that I have to watch and a lot of us are very keen on watching to see how Georgia deals with this. They did really well in the transfer portal but now it's just about putting it all together on the field on Saturday. This is a game that I really can't wait to watch. I think it has lasting implications on the season because if Clemson were to lose this game I don't think that their season is good enough within the ACC to justify a playoff spot depending on how the season ends up. We're going to talk about that as the season comes through and as the game nears. Hop down to the comments. Let me know what your top five games are for this weekend and be sure to be on the lookout for game breakdowns coming tomorrow through the rest of this week as well as the first live stream on the channel. That's it. See you.